either with your hand or with machine, which in my opinion gives the best mold, that's the machine. When molding with your hand, you need to trap out the air that might generate while using your hand. It's technical or else you might end up with a bread that has a hole inside of it. Now another thing is check your oven, your oven temperature, ensure it is heating properly evenly in all the compartments. Also make sure you put your bread in when the temperature is hot enough. I advise you let your oven heat to 180 degrees to 200 degrees if you're using a commercial oven to bake. Let it heat to like that degree before you put in your bread. Hmm? Now when you place your molded bread into the pan, please guys, leave it alone. Don't go and be touching it. Eh? You keep touching before it rises. Because all that touching, opening and closing the pan to see if it has risen can make your dough collapse and you end up with a damaged bread. Hmm? So sometimes all that touching, 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 touching will affect your bread. Yes, I know you might want to see the extent at which your bread has risen, if it has risen enough. Yes, I understand that part. But when you're opening it, open it gently. Open it gently to the side just to peep in and close it. And you don't have to go and start opening all the pan of bread that you're going to put into the oven. Just pick one that you use as your sample. Pick one of the pan. That will be the sample pan that you'll be using to, to know how far your bread has risen. And not all of them. Don't be opening all of them. Just pick only one pan. And be, you, you open it gently. Don't open it to the end. Just a little bit and look through. And then you put it back. So that even if it's going to get damaged, you know that it's just only that one that you might end up having a damaged bread for. Which most times doesn't really even happen if you do it right. If you open it well. Right? So another thing again, that moving of your pan. You've put your pan, you've put your dough inside the pan. You have left it for it to rise. Later, and the place where you kept it, you don't like that place again. You carry your pan. You transport it to another place. All that carrying your pan and moving up and down will affect that bread. That bread could collapse inside. And by the time you bake it, it's no longer full. You'll be noticing that it is sinked inside, like it, like it has gone in. And you'll be wondering, ah, why? It's because you're not leaving it alone. Leave it alone. Hmm? Leave it alone. Let it come up. Right? After baking, please, please, and please, I can't emphasize this on enough. Bring out your bread from the pan immediately. Do not let it remain inside the pan because you meant to bring out that bread from the oven. You know, it's steaming. They are steam. You might not even see the steam, but it's steaming. Steams are coming out. The moment you open the cover of the pan, that hot pan with the hot bread inside from the oven, the moment you remove that um, pan cover, the pan cover, you notice that it's steaming. There's steam. So you need to open it immediately. Let that steam escape. Don't bring out your pan, your hot bread pan from the oven and throw on the floor. And the bread is still inside that um, and the bread is still inside that pan. Your bread will damage you. It cause serious error. It cause a defect. So bring it out immediately. If you have workers that are working for you, monitor them. That's why when you have the bakery, you have to be there as the owner of the bakery. Let them not spoil your bread for you. Because any damage, you're the one that will bear the bronze, not them. You see those your staff, they are, on, they are all after their um, uh, salary at the end of the month. It is you that is the owner of the business that should be monitoring them. If you cannot monitor them, then get a manager, get a bakery manager that will supervise them. Because some of even all these um, guys, all these workers, they are artists and they really don't even know the effect of, of not bringing out the bread out of the pan immediately after baking. Some of them don't know. That's the reason for this video. I'm enlightening you so that you can also enlighten them. So they don't go and spoil your business when you and spoil your bread. Because every bread now that gets damaged, you're the one that will pay for it. It's your money that is going, not them. Do you understand? It's your money. And look at how expensive raw materials are now. So imagine having damaged bread. Imagine you make bread and then you have more than 50 or... Let me not say 50. That's exaggerating too much. And you have more like up to 10 damage. Do you know what that is? You don't want those damage. You don't want it. Hmm? And you can't because you can't sell those kind of bread. Any bread, and another thing, let me advise you: any bread you're baking and it is damaged, please, 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 do not send it into the market because it could ruin your brand. Bring it out, fish out every damaged bread, bring them out, 
and count it as your loss, right? You don't want the customer going outside, picking up your bread, excited to pick up your bread, and only for them to get home and see that, ah, your bread is damaged inside. Next time, they will not buy that bread again. Or in time, they want to go and buy it. When they remember what happened to them the last time, how they bought your bread and it was spoiled, or how they bought the bread and one side was bent, or they bought it and it was, you know, they won't forget. Customers don't forget who. It always thinks, it sticks to their brain. Anytime they want to buy, they'll remember that one. Ah, they'll, please, they'll drop it down and pick the next bread. And you don't want that. Because it's difficult to, to convince customers to buy your product again after they have rejected it the first time. It's not easy. You have to do a lot of, market, a lot of marketing and, uh, and convincing. So avoid it. Eh? Anytime your bread is damaged, please just keep it aside and count it as your loss. Share the bread to your staff or share it to, to anybody. What me I do in my bakery is that for every damaged bread, I've told my staff. So that's why I don't. I, I told them that I don't need to employ people that are learning on the job. Come if you want to work with me. Come as an experienced worker, so that if my bread damaged, I will hold you responsible. You cannot be giving me losses. Then at the end of the month, I will still pay you salary. Mm -mm, I won't accept that from you. You can't be giving me losses, and then at the end of the month, I will still pay you for giving me losses. No, for my my bakers and my my baker and my mixer, they know. For every damaged bread, I'll be counting it for you. At the end of the month, how much is the bread? If I'm selling the bread to customers at 100, 100 naira, I'll be deducting the 100, 100 naira. And I'll make sure I give you back the damaged bread. I will, I will know. I won't take the damaged bread. I'll give you. Go and share with your family. I'll give you the bread. You take it home and go and enjoy with your family. But just know that when I'm paying you your salary, I will remove it. Except if I'm just being nice and I decide that, okay, you know what? Just go. Hmm? But most times when I do that is after I've warned you severally that your action, what you're doing, is causing me, is giving me damaged bread. Uh -huh. That's when I resort to that though. Not when I've not warned you before. Then all of a sudden, because you damaged bread, I begin to deduct it from your money. No, 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 I don't do that. What I do is I will warn you severally. I will tell you, please, see this thing you're doing is what's making this bread damaged. Can you stop doing it? Can you be doing it properly? Uh -huh. After I finish warning you that and you still do it and my bread is still getting damaged, come on. You're causing losses for me. You're causing losses for me. The head that's when I will not react. And I notice that my staffs, my staffs, they can be stubborn sometimes. I, what I've noticed with them is that when I deduct from their salary, that's when they behave. When I've not deducted from their salary, they don't behave. When I keep warning you, I'll be warning them, warning them. I will say, hey, what, what can Madame do? Ah, yes, nobody warn. She will warn us, you know, and they'll still continue. But I now notice that when I start deducting me from their salary, everybody start behaving. Everybody stay behaving. They try to behave because they know that it will affect their pay. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Topic at the problems associated in bread making and their solutions. Right?